Yeah, I need you on the daily, daily. Couple weeks and I'd go crazy, crazy. Yeah, I need you on the regular, the regular. Yeah, I need you. Yeah, I'm telling ya, I'm telling ya. Yeah, I need you on the daily. Hi, welcome to Divas with Debbie. So today's going to be quick and just a very small thought. We've also welcomed another painting I did. <laughs> now all the paintings. Um, so today we're just looking at Isaiah 26. And again, for context, we've just seen the judgment on the earth through the eyes of Isaiah, you know, and him just weeping over that and really understanding its gravity. And then we see Isaiah launch into this song of praise. And um, this is his, 20, Isaiah 25 was his own personal song of praise where he talks about God swallowing up death forever. Um, I love that image. And Isaiah 26 introduces this whole chapter like this. It says, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. So this isn't Isaiah's personal like song of praise. This is the song of praise for the people of God. And I'm expanding that not just to be, you know, the nation of Israel, but because we're talking about, um, you know, the end time, we know that these are, um, this song is opened up to the church. I think this is my personal interpretation. But what do we learn? We learn that the people of God are praising God because they are secure. And here we're talking about like fortress. It says we have a strong city. He has set up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. It's really interesting. Um, it makes me think about how the early uh you know, the Jewish people were looking for a political messiah. And if I were reading this passage without knowledge of how Jesus would come, you know, without knowing the New Testament, I might think that when Jesus comes, there's going to be some sort of political freedom. There's going to be fortified city, a good earthly kingdom. But God wanted to establish something so much bigger than that he his scope was larger and he I don't think we're I think maybe we're talking about a physical city but then at the same time we're talking about something bigger and when it says like we have a strong city he sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks I'm I'm intrigued by that language that salvation is the salvation of God is our security um, our defense, kind of like the armor of God, the shield of faith, you know, the helmet of salvation, like that helmet, which is protecting, you know, the one of the most vital organs in your body, you know, you have the heart and you have the brain. Um, just a thought. Um, I, I love reading the Old Testament in light of the New Testament. So, um, we're looking now at verse 3 and 4, which is really the standout verses to me. It says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. And again, we're listening to the song of the people of God at the end of the ages. This is what they're saying. It's kind of like we already know that we're going to win and we even know the victory song that they're singing and it's actually a song of encouragement and admonishment saying looking back to the people and saying God is trustworthy trust in him he's going to keep you in peace trust in the Lord he's like an everlasting rock he's not going to move he's steady to build your life on um we learn throughout I'll just hit a couple of key points. This chapter talks about like the pride and how God is going to bring them low and humble them. Um, and he talks about the way of the righteous, the path 
of the righteous is going to be leveled before them. Um, and I stuck on this verse too, verse 8. It says, In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. Verse 9, My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. I feel like we've shifted a bit. And actually now I'm just noticing a quote. I think we're moving back to Isaiah's own personal song of praise. And he says, your name and remembrance are the desire of my soul. There's this yearning in him that's so genuine and, and this desire for the Lord and this commemoration of him. Um, and he, he talks about how, you know, God is distinct. There are other people that have ruled over the nations of Israel and sure, maybe their names are in the back of the heads of people, but really it is the Lord. It says, our Lord, our God, other lords beside you have ruled over us, but your name alone we bring to remembrance. And it talks about how God has increased the nation. O oh Lord, you have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have enlarged all the borders of the land. And again, I love looking at this with this New Testament enlightenment, that it's not just about increasing the nation politically or geographically and expanding, um, you know, the the borders, though it says you have enlarged all the borders of the land. Think about this, like God has increased his nation. He's invited Gentiles into it. He's invited the world through his son Jesus to enter into the family of God. And the coolest part about you have enlarged all the borders of the land is literally he has like taken them away because the church of God is everywhere. Um, though part of, that's why missions is so important. We want to bring the gospel to where, to people who have not heard the gospel. Um, but there is no longer a geographical location. That's where Israel is a, centered around Jerusalem very strongly. We know that Israel is centered around Jerusalem, but the Christian church doesn't have to be centered around a geographical point. We have the Holy Spirit. Um, and we just get a small glimpse of um, the resurrection to come. And I'm sure Isaiah didn't understand the full revelation of what this meant. But it says, Your dead shall live, verse 19, Their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. Ah, resurrection! So just some things to look forward to. Um, with joy and, and some reassurance that this is someone who's seen a lot of things and he's seen things that have made his heart weep when it comes to the end times and judgment. But when it comes to our God, he is confident that our God is an everlasting rock. He is our salvation. He is our perfect peace. He is trustworthy. So let's just rest in that today. Okay, that's it. Bye.